I have this question for you today. I'm wondering if you've ever wondered what the universe is made of. That is, what is the material substance that fills it? So for instance, if I had the universe just right here in front of me, right, what would be in it? Could I put my hand through it? Could I grab it? Could I feel it? What, what would it feel like? Would it be soft, hard, cold? Would it hurt to touch? These are the kind of questions that I wanted to address as, as a, uh, that I've been addressing as a scientist uh, and trying effectively being driven by my curiosity uh, by looking at the night sky. So you may wonder, is it filled with atoms, protons, neutrons, things that we're familiar with? So effectively, the things that make up our bodies and our world? Well, as it turns out, there's really two main things that make up the material or the energy, the matter energy in our universe. That is, this dark energy substance, which I promise it's not related to the dark force, so don't worry. <laughs> but there's also this 30% matter. So I like to focus on the matter, because really right now the dark energy is, is, a, is a hot topic of research that we don't really understand too well. So of all the matter, of that 30% of the universe, Unfortunately, it's only about 20% or so that is the stuff that we know very well. So the atoms, the protons, the neutrons, the, the quarks, and the gluons that make them up, things that we're very familiar with. All the physics that you've probably learned in your college courses are only for 20% of the, of the matter sector in the universe. So what is the other 80%? Well, we call it dark matter. Dark in a sense because we don't really have a good name for it right now. It's almost like a placeholder, really. Uh, there's nothing uh, you know, mystical about it or anything you know, so uh, deep. But really, it's just that it's a placeholder name for something we don't know yet. So here's our current picture. Out of the contents of the universe, we've got about 73% is this mysterious dark energy, which that really deserves a name, dark energy, because we really don't know what it is. Uh, but then we also have the matter sector which is mostly made up by this mysterious dark matter. So what is it? We have a standard model that is a very well-developed theory for particle physics and of the regular uh, atomic spectra, the protons and the neutrons, the things we're very familiar with. But what about this dark matter? Can we have a standard model for it too? Well, the interesting thing about it is that it only seems to interact gravitationally. Now, for a long time, we also thought that it interacted through another force called the weak nuclear force. But despite experimental efforts for many years, we haven't really been able to find those or find those interactions. So for the most part, the only thing that we could be entirely sure of right now is that it interacts only gravitationally. But what does that mean? What does it mean for something to only interact gravitationally? So it only, out of the four forces, it only picks one. So why does it do that? It's a very strange phenomenon, and I'd like to explore it with you today through this thought experiment. And I'd like for you to join me uh, into this interesting idea, something that I've been thinking about for quite a few years now. So first, let's start with our lab. So this is our home, a place that, you know, it's beautiful, nice blue planet, uh, and, you know, it's a fantastic place, right? Next up on the list is our sun. So this is my favorite star, probably your favorite star because you wouldn't be alive without it, right? <laughs> so out of the, out of the sky, I, I love the sun the most. But our sun is really just one of very, very, very many in the galaxy. In fact, there's about 300 billion or so stars in just the Milky Way galaxy itself. So all these stars have their own planetary systems and many have been verified to this point. But if that was astonishing enough, now you should consider that current estimates have us at around one to two trillion galaxies in the universe. So when we look out, there are many, many, many galaxies with many, many, many stars in them. But if that weren't awesome enough, this is the part that's most interesting to me. And this is the cosmic web beyond the galaxies beyond all that vastness, there's also this web-like structure in the universe which 
comes from, basically you can imagine all the points there as being clusters of galaxies themselves. And this is the current state of the art cosmological theory. So what's dark matter's role in this cosmic soup? Well, here I'm showing you a simulation of the current cosmological theory. And it relies very much on dark matter. It's basically the bulk of the recipe. If you were cooking a, a universe, basically dark matter would be your number one matter uh, that, that would guide the, the large scale structure. But really, the regular matter, the stuff that you and I are made of, that's just spice. That's just a little bit of spice in the soup. <laughs> so dark matter is really what's most important there. So how do we observe it? Well, this is a very cool way of knowing that dark matter exists. And so when a mass is present in space-time, it bends space-time. So if we're here and we're observing some galaxy far away, then we would, we would actually see something like a lens in space because the light waves here are actually, they'd be going out this way, but because space-time is curved, it's actually curving and hitting us here, such as this ray right there. So what we see when we look out in space is these incredible images of these giant lenses, which are pretty awesome. I, I think they're pretty incredible. And if we're able to look in a very slow way for, throughout the entire universe, we see this incredible lens in space. And that's how we know dark matter is there. And that's one of the best, one, one of the most uh, interesting observational features of having a matter that is invisible, that doesn't interact with light, and only gravitational, and causing this really cool gravitational lens effect. So we definitely know dark matter exists. But then, what is it? What is its particle nature? So here's where I like to lead this thought experiment. Here I have an apple, Granny Smith apple. A very interesting apple, indeed. It works very well, you know, it tastes great. And if I were to hold it out, we know that this thing interacts gravitationally, also electromagnetically, and through all the other nuclear forces. So if I were to drop this, what would it do? Of course, it would fall, right? And then when it hits the ground, it would probably roll away. But now imagine that I had a dark matter apple in my hand. Of course, probably by magic, I'd have to hold it because I couldn't interact. My atoms couldn't interact with it. But if I just held it out here and I let it go, what would it do? Would it float? Would it fall? Well, if it only interacts gravitationally, then of course this would fall, right? It would fall, be attracted by the Earth, because it feels the gravity. And then, what would happen when it hits the floor? Would it interact at all, right? You, it would go right through the floor because it wouldn't interact with the ground. So it would fall, continue going through the center, and then it would just continue all the way to the other side and get pulled right back up again and come right back up to here. And it will just continue over and over forever. So I hope that idea illustrates to you the strangeness of what this dark matter is that only interacts gravitationally. So I welcome you. I welcome people out there with new ideas. We need new, fresh ideas to try to understand this better. So I hope with that you understand this modern conundrum in theoretical physics. Thank you.